Has it kicked me out of the game yet? Nope. As a content creator, <clears throat> I strive to build my community on positivity and compassion. My community, TCAT, has evolved into such an important part of my life and has helped me create lifelong friendships. I've met so many amazing people online and in real life because of the extravagant world created by Bungie and a little old game called Destiny. Some of my favorite memories include traveling to Bungie to reveal the Taken King, going to GCX and meeting so many amazing people, and raising money for St. Jude. I will cherish all of these memories and I cannot wait to make more. You can't even, like, read the chat. <laughs> Alright Shadows, we've got an hour before it starts, or like 50 minutes, so I'm going to go make a coffee. Um, I'll be right back. See you guys yo, in here. I've been a jugador of Destiny since the beta of 1, and I would say that the best experience has been all the people I've met, and what this game has permitted me to improve and super me as a jugador. Lo más gratificante para mí han sido las experiencias en raids de día uno, la competitividad que estos generan y los retos en solitario que esta magnífica entrega te permite realizar. Así que vamos a por otros 30 años, Bungie. So my clan, Peasant Guard, was formed through a love of Destiny and it's made up of players from the UK, America and Norway. And my favourite Bungie moment, something that will stay with me forever, is after a year of playing together online, we were all contacted by Bungie and asked if we'd like to be flown out to Germany to meet in person and to have that moment captured in a mini documentary. And that like happened over six years ago now and it always brings a smile to my face whenever I think about it. So yeah, no question. That was my favorite bungee moment.
I am a former drug addict and playing Destiny 1 kicked my drug addiction. And on my five year sober mark, I actually got the Titan Hunter Warlock uh, class logos tattooed on me. Um, and I also want to thank you guys for consistently putting out great games that help build a community. I have a lot of my friends worldwide, both here in the US, UK, Australia, um, and um, the, um, Europe. Um, from playing Destiny and Destiny 1. So happy birthday, Bungie, and those are two of my main Bungie memories. I love how there's people like in the chat saying like, it's a dead game, it's a dead game or whatever. Dead game, dead game. <clears throat> until there's actual, um, until the game actually start, I mean the stream actually starts. Starts with going home after school. Fucking cactus playing Halo 3 custom games all night. Trash compactor, tremors, duck hunt, so many fantastic options. Stay away to heaven. And then I think the moment I really got into Destiny and just fell in love with that game was during the Vault of Glass. Back then, exotics are really uncommon, and one of our teammates had a Rick hard Cack is no here. Ever seen before, so we're all like, dude, what the heck is that gun? And he just goes, watch this and of course start shooting off the walls and we see all the bullets ricochet everywhere and it was that that moment i knew i was hooked 20 minute intro oh my god <laughs> hard light low Cringe as fuck, Rick. Rick Cacus here, Rick Cacus, rickety, rickety, rickety. <clears throat> Wonder if Bife's gonna be on here, please. I love to see both. Just doing like an hour showcase of um, fans, like art and stuff, and people of the community. It looks like a cool sword. <clears throat> Huh. 
Mein erstes Spiel von Bungie war tatsächlich als Destiny 1. Und Destiny hat mein Leben verändert. Ich wurde durch Destiny zu einem Content Creator, der auf YouTube Videos hochlädt und auf Twitch streamt. Ich wurde auf verschiedene Messen und auf verschiedene Events eingeladen, wo ich einiges erlebt habe. Ich habe sogar Justin Truman, den heutigen Game Director, kennengelernt und mich mit ihm über Destiny unterhalten. Es ist eine ganz, ganz große Ehre. Außerdem habe ich sehr viele Bekanntschaften, sehr viele Freunde über das Spiel kennengelernt, wo ich heute sagen würde, das sind teilweise meine besten Freunde. Ja, Destiny, Destiny ist geil. She passed out. <clears throat> Maybe she got kicked for AFK. I don't know. Oh, this way. Someone said, is this slow mode? Flash forward to me as an adult discovering Destiny for the first time walking out of the Cosmodrome, seeing that fallen walker, taking it down and just feeling like such a, just just such an awesome, powerful force to be reckoned with. I was in love with the fantasy. Will y'all chill with the spam? Uh, Agreed. And that was before I knew anything of the Destiny community, which Three, six, really feels like an eternity. my heart. Thank you so much, Bungie, for creating this world. Uh, this Follow me. Gamers, uh, Can we, like, I've report this kind? Friends, clanmates, uh, been able to talk to people and interact with people who have inspired me throughout the years to, to <clears throat> launch my own community. Man, I'll be banning the, sh banning the shit out of these dickheads. <clears throat> At least there is a moderator. Cheese moon. No, I'm still in the game. Someone give me a sub. Banji me ha portado durante todos estos años algo increíble. Destiny forma parte de mi vida desde hace mucho tiempo y sin duda lo que, que tiene este juego. No word of adventure today. He must have found something interesting. Cosas interesting. Maravillosas y poder realizar actividades con con esta gente, tener su apoyo y su compañía a la hora de querer mejorar no tiene precio. Espero poder seguir durante muchos años más uh, en este mundo y poder esperar con mucha ilusión y mucho hype todo lo que está por venir. Well, that's dope. 
chat. Yo. <clears throat> There's a lot of messages. My favorite memory from a bungee game has I can't to come even from like September 2016. It's a work night and we're about done with a Wrath of the Machine raid when my friend messages us and says, you know that ARG puzzle that Bungie put out? We solved it. Here's a map, go stand in these very specific spots in the raid and see what happens. So we do it and these two monitors turn on and they start spitting out ones and zeros. And someone on the team's like, that's binary. I think that means we need to stand here and over there. Then the mysterious diamond in the center of the room opens up, revealing the next step in a quest to get Outbreak Prime an exotic weapon, and we're losing it. I stay up all night, finishing the quest. I get maybe two hours of sleep before work the next day. Figuring out how to open up the diamond in the Wrath of the Machine raid is my favorite memory because it combines the two things about Bungie games that keeps me coming back, unraveling mysteries and sharing experiences with other people. Dope. I can't even keep up with the fucking chat. It's just blasting too much. Nut. <clears throat> the fucking um spam. Like it's not just. It's not like actual. <clears throat> general talking it's like it's people spamming the chat with like the chat's just fucking oh I can't even scroll up to like My god, you can't even like go up. Like there really have been so many special memories. Um, I had two reoccurring trials dates every week when Trials of Osiris was going on. One of them was for Dr. Bro Snaps, and then the other one was on Monday nights, I would play Trials of Chill Cyrus with some Season of a little content. Online. One of them, <laughs> Dopa. Bring females uh, back, what? to his wedding a couple of years ago, which was really cool. We've been friends IRL now for years. And the other one is my boyfriend of five years don't now, care who's excited i still can't believe how crazy it is that destiny brought me to the amount of like <clears> spam that's other. going on you can't even and read the chat result, now we have another little guardian <laughs> she's a future hunter main for sure but she quite literally would not exist if it wasn't for bungie slash destiny and trials of osiris 
Adorable little baby. Fucking can't even read the chat right now. Now how come, like, why are people spamming that? Like, there's no need. You can't even, like, read the chat. I think one of my, another one of my favorite moments was the D2 reveal event. And I don't think there will ever be an event that will match that. And I could be wrong, but the room was shaking. The, like everyone was so excited. Everyone was screaming. You didn't have to tell them to get excited because you could feel the energy in the room. Everyone was hyped. It just, well, there was like this vibration in the room of how excited everyone was, and and it was just. I remember just holding one of his hands. <laughs> Send, <laughs> show me Bob and Virgin. Oh my God. Came down, I'm just like bubbled up, and I'm pretty sure we cried together. We cried while holding hands. <laughs> bro, I'm just like the not even cinematic bothering. trailer for the D2 uh, event. Jesus so I remember Christ. that being such a huge, huge moment, and I just, I just knew that I was a a part of something that was way, way, way bigger than I thought. Need Bife, agreed. We're Bife, yes. <clears throat> Give us Bife, yo. Need Bife, need Bife, need... There's a lot of Bife. some relationship stuff in the game man that'd be great screw bife oh what Seven minutes. I think that my favorite bunch of memories are always probably going to be my childhood land parties I would have growing up with my friends. And then even into college with like Halo Reach when it launched, I remember running down to like the college store and, and getting my copy there. Uh, but as an adult, I don't think I could ever replace the memories I have about the day one raiding I've done with my friends. Just being faced with a colossal challenge and defeating it with some of your best friends, there's just nothing quite like it. Never warp meta. What are friends? This is boring, I'm dying inside. Oh my god, I love Fortnite. <laughs> oh yo yo bro.
bring Kate back. Get the witch queen out of here. <clears throat> My clan math class in oh, look, it's Dad Owen. rented out a house for packs and easily one of my favorite memories through all of this has been being in that house with them for a few days just hanging out everybody chilling together and just having a really really good time so I never would have had that without uh without Bungie and, and Destiny so fucking data man <clears throat> Dado hype. <laughs> What's about he's in this chat? Can you even check that shit? But DMG? Oh, these are all the moderators. Let's go to the D D D D D D. Yep, Dado's here. Bife? Yo, my name's Bife is in the chat? What about Houndish? Or Evade? Oh man, some memories, man. The memories that really, really, truly brought me back was Destiny 1. Evade Entertainment. We played Glass week 2. We didn't play it on the week of release. Yep. We played it on week 2. And... We first experienced the raids, me and the boys from work. Um, I didn't really know too many people. We went in that raid, man, and we defeated the first uh, encounter. We beat the first encounter. Houndish? I don't know, but fucking Dado and Bife is here. <clears throat> yeah, hey, where's that fish? Where is the fish? Nerf Chaos Reach, yeah. Where's fish? <laughs> fish ghost. The thing about Bungie memories for me is that it's memories of my friends because Bungie games are about friends. It's four friends sitting in a room, everybody with their own Xbox, everybody with their own TV, and everybody yelling at each other because the one person keeps bringing the gravity hammer into the elevator, killing all of us. It's Destiny with a crew, six people, tired, long night, and you haven't beat the raid boss, and you want to beat that raid boss, and the last run it works, and you yell for 25 minutes before you log off. <clears throat> the amount of tea bagging. I see Lakshmi get oh savapoon <laughs> sup with the beans babungie crossplay now
Whew. Oh shit. 20 minutes to go. Fuck, you keep hitting the mic like an idiot. <laughs> Have a thick. Nerf Titans buff hunters? No. I had just moved to the States, and the very first friend that I made here was a guardian that I found in the Cosmodrome. And that guardian has been my best friend and brother for five years now, and that was only the beginning of a very special relationship with destiny for me uh, some of the most beautiful moments of my life have been driven and shared by the destiny community including coming out um, and watching hundreds of people that i didn't even know um, just come together to show love and support and solidarity in that moment i knew that i had found a home away from home and this game and this community constantly reminds me that we're not guardians, just a name. We truly are bearers of light. Lol, what? <clears throat> Y'all chill. Shh. Jesus Christ. I actually just threw up. Oh my god.
head if you guys just want to have a seat. It's just literally recording the conversation. So, all right. What Here we go. go wrong? <laughs> <laughs> so I was, um, I was 11 when you started the, when you started the company, but you were you're I mean, yeah. but you are not that much older. Like you weren't that much older. Like what? What is the like? Take me all the way back. <laughs> I guess to be, that's like, true. Take, yeah. yeah, take me all the way back to the like, the moment where you're like, I want to do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There, there's this there's a funny thing for like a lot of my life. When people would ask me, you know, like how did how did this start? I'd be like, I don't know. It was kind of weird. I just like started making games, and it seemed like it was fun, and I kept doing it. And when I when I really started thinking back to my childhood, like I've been I've been obsessed with how like rules can change human behavior and how you can all agree to play a card game by a certain set of rules and you know the you know the adults that i was observing you know as a kid would they could play cards all night and laugh and you know interact in whatever way that they did and yet you could take a different set of rules for example a set of rules that a five-year-old made with the best of intentions and the adults would like nod and laugh but they would only play that game for you know, three minutes. <laughs> and like, that is like always fascinated me. And I, there we go. I now realized I'm kicked like, out of looking destiny. back on it, that I've been doing that, you know, my whole life. And it like irritated my friends and they didn't want to play. I mean, because you, we start as a game designer and you suck. Like you're terrible. Like your games are, are a horrible, and they're not even games. They're just, it, I mean, it's almost, you're just like a little tyrant trying to get people to do things. And I remember like building, I probably spent like weeks building this like really complex, uh, pen and paper adventure game on index cards and I'd like drawn pictures of monsters and everything like this and I remember finally getting you know a friend to play it at school and it was like the first dice roll like some creature like killed his character or something it was just like the, the worst possible you know like outcome and I was like I mean I was like in fourth grade or something but some kids look at the garbage truck and are like that big powerful machine like that's what I want to be but to me it was the, the deck of cards like, I want to know how to control that. Like, that, like, power to build an experience that when people come into it, they, you know, they, they leave with a smile on their face or more connected to the people around them. Yeah, that's, I've been doing that forever. It's kind of, it's kind of crazy. Way before, way before computers. And then, of course, right, I saw games on computers, and I was like, wow. <laughs> my, my perception, you know, based on all of our time together, has actually been, has been, like, you are more interested in the making of them in a bunch of ways than playing them. Like playing games isn't like a, it's not an explicit hobby of yours. Like you, like you're educating yourself. It's, it's more, it's more work, but it's like, you're like, you're always yeah. making stuff. Yeah, I think this is true. And I like, I feel a little bit like guilty about it sometimes because I think it is the most dangerous thing as a designer to enjoy the making more than the playing, right? Because the number of things you can enjoy making is infinitely larger than the number of things that, <laughs> that you can enjoy playing right much less other people can enjoy playing and so yeah what you say is true and i and i feel like it's sort of like an addiction that i've had to fight so that i make things that are worthwhile because i mean because it's you know the whole shtick to me is about you know touching other people like somehow you yeah. know so we talked a little bit about kind of the the origin i want to jump ahead again i'm gonna jump to my life 2004. I remember I finished the campaign for Halo 2 and, and my friends and I got distracted a bunch by the multiplayer. Yo, really? Subscribers only chat now? Metal Gear 3. And after I finished both of those games, I went and watched the Spy Doc, mm. the, the, the documentary that like, I look I, I look at now and I yeah, met a bunch of y'all and I, I'm like, oh, I didn't pick up on all the like human suffering <laughs> in, this, in this documentary the first time, the first time I watched it. Do I get to sign your? Uh, no. Do you remember? Copy? Do you remember this? I looked for it actually before I came in today. I, I don't. I don't think I have it anymore. You don't? Yeah. No. I remember the sweatshirt. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah the. So this was this. Yeah. This. This is. Right. The, this is. The, what is this from? <laughs> like, what is this actually? I've like wondered this. Like, what is? So this? I can't chat anymore because I'm not a subscriber <laughs> and I don't have the money yeah, for that I, shit. It, so. it said Osiris on it. I thought it looked cool, and yeah, I bought it. I have no idea. I, exactly. <clears throat> Right. Yeah, I have I, no idea what it was. Yeah, I still to this day I literally I remember the sweatshirt, right? Yeah, and this yeah. is the moment this is this moment that I became like aware that humans make these things. Because otherwise it was like magic, right? Like, the, yeah, like right. there's nothing yeah. in like there's nothing in two thousand four about 
Look at these developers making stuff that you care about. It, that's not, like, there wasn't really much of, like, the internet sucked, too. Like, you didn't have, like, look, you can access these people. On the, none of that. It was a totally different time. So I'm watching this, this documentary, and, and, and you, this dude shows up, and so, the paraphrase is, like, you know, um, it's like the cynical gamers who something doesn't grab us in five minutes. You know, we're gonna we're gonna turn it off. And it was like I was like, oh my god, it was like I was spoke to, and I have like no, like I'm like an English degree, I'm like I can't make games, I couldn't write any pro, like couldn't write code or anything. I just remember, I remember feeling as a as a as like a player, like super duper spoke to in in that moment. And so we come out of the the building a game, like building it by yourself, and talk now about like. The, the team has changed. Like building teams has changed. Like the way you think about building teams has changed. The way Bun like in the however many years I've been at Bungie now, in the fifth, like the way the company approaches building teams have changed. Let's go all the way back to to Halo Two. Like building the team for Halo One and Halo Two. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I I think I think if like past Jason was here, he would. Yeah, he would disagree with a lot of stuff that. I, that I'm gonna say, but I, I think compared to the intentionality that we, you know, try sometimes exhibit, you know, know we should have about, you know, about building teams and how important teams are. Back then, it was almost just this, you know, snowball that was rolling downhill of people who, you know, liked our games and came to the company, and you know, then you know, it, it snowball rolled a little faster, and it was. Yeah, it was just a bunch of people trying to do their best, trying to recreate the feelings that they had, you know, when they played when they played games. And you can get pretty far on on passion and and talent, but it sometimes makes things really, yeah, really hard when you're not being thoughtful about the organization of the team, the design of the product relative to the resources and time you have. And yeah, it made Halo 2 super challenging for a bunch of reasons, but yeah, I don't know. I guess that's, I'm, yeah. And, and past Jason would, would tell me, like, you're an idiot. We were thinking about all that stuff. You just had to learn. But, like, when I look back, like, he wasn't thinking about that stuff, <laughs> you know? What was he thinking about? I mean, he was just thinking about the game. But, I, I mean, I don't know. I always think, I mean, I think my past self is, like, not really that sharp. Because, I, I mean, every year we've learned so much, I, I, I feel. And so I look back and I think that, you know, that guy must be, that guy must be an idiot. Because <laughs> look, look, look at all the stuff I learned just this year on Halo 1. Like, I didn't know, any, I didn't know anything. But I go back and, yeah, I found one of the notebooks from Halo 1. Like, that guy wasn't an idiot. Like, I mean, there's stuff that, you know, he didn't know. But um, there's a lot of, like, super interesting exploration and thought and, like, possibilities that, you know, didn't end up with the game in there. And... Uh, yeah, so I don't know. I don't know what to. I don't know what to make of that because I feel. I feel like I've learned so much, but when I go back, I'm. I'm sort of like blown away by, you know, what. Yeah, what was. What was happening in. In my mind. Um, yeah, it's pretty embarrassing when I think about like the. I mean, I think about my life in terms of decades and like what's the. What are like the big lessons from the. The decades and as I when I like articulate one of the like a, a lesson from my thirties is like so embarrassing. <laughs> Give me one from yours. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. I mean, I really started, yeah, I started Destiny 1 not understanding the value of having at least somebody on the, on, you know, on the team who cares more than anybody else about, yeah, what, what the team is missing, what the team isn't admitting, who on the team isn't talking to each other, where on the team is our, are our dreams incompatible with the calendar or our dreams in incompatible with our ability or our dreams incompatible with the hardware that we need to run on. Um, and I saw production as, you know, a calendar and a schedule. Um, and it's true that a schedule is a thing that you use <clears throat> to sort of test people's understanding of reality in the sense of, you know, can the things we want to do fit in the time that we think we have, and how are we tracking against that? But I saw it as like an Ooh, end shit. itself. And it's like interesting to hear all this stuff. You know, didn't pay attention to it. But God, like embracing all that stuff is a thing that will be, yeah, front and center in anything that I do. Yeah, anything I do in the future. I think it's making sure everyone on the team has an objective understanding of reality and doing anything you can to fix it when that isn't true. I didn't understand that when I started Destiny 1. Destiny 1 made me understand that. <laughs> so 
What I want to talk about now is where computers are heading. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Where, where's, where's it going? <laughs> AR is going to be the thing that displaces mobile. Like, I'm so, I'm so sure of that. I'm so sure we're all going to be wearing glasses and all the TVs are going to go in a landfill. All those companies are going to go out of business. All the cracks in our ceiling are going to get fixed in our glasses. Like, so many people are going to end up with virtual pets and windows out to the Taj Mahal or the Eiffel Tower. And maybe, it, maybe, it'll, be, maybe it'll be 20 years. Like, I think it's going to be a lot sooner than that. And I, and I think it's going to be really interesting. And when it happens, like, the reason that you're going to know it's going to take over the whole world is everybody's going to laugh at it. Like, everybody's going to think it's ridiculous. When the, when, the, when the iPhone, you know, came out, the stuff people were saying to, like, not admit that they were holding, like, a, you know, chunk of the sun in their hands that was going to change the world. Like, the stuff people said was ridiculous. And, and people are going to do that again. And the other interesting thing about AR is if you have AR, you have to have local compute because you need high frame rate. You need to be able to render all kinds of crazy stuff like right there, like, you know, within two feet of your body. Yeah, which means I think like all the cloud computing stuff totally going to happen, absolutely going to be a thing. Um, but we're not going to transition fully to, you know, thin, thin client. But yeah, those, those would my, be my two predictions. Local compute never goes away. AR displaces mobile, like 100%. 100%. So on a long enough horizon, how are we going to get ready for that? <laughs> we got, we got, it's, uh, yeah, like the, you know. So, so it, yeah, it's a, I mean, it's a great question. And I, I, I think, I think the answer is like, we are, we already are. Like, I, I don't think what's going to happen is there's going to be a whole new slew of games that can only happen in AR. I mean, there's definitely going to be some. But I think in a lot of cases, what's going to happen is people are going to yeah, throw away their TV and have a way bigger TV. Or they're going to go to a totally virtual space that has a bigger you know, screen. And they might play some tabletop or strategy games in a different way. But I, I think people are always going to be playing first-person shooters you know, with some kind of input device on like a virtual, uh, you know, window in their visual field. And so I think a bunch of the stuff that we're great at doesn't, yeah, get tipped over by this. I think we're great at, all right? So let's go all, all the way back. Bungie games, someday. <laughs> Not the company's still there, it's, but I think a lot about my life through the lens of what would go on my tombstone. I just do. I think it's like, I think it's, I think it's so, I think it's like completely busted. I don't think it's like a, a thing a normal, like reasonably sane human being would do, but I think it's a simple way of summarizing your existence and it's the acknowledgement that, it, that these existences sometimes come to an end. The question I wanna ask is about Bungie's epitaph. <laughs> like the like, what is, that, what is that simple distillation of what Bungie is? The tombstone worthy distillation. I was on the 271 coming back across the bridge home yeah, one night on the bus, and these two guys in in front of me were talking, you know, at first about college. Like they were they were they were older, but they'd obviously like gone to college together, and I think they worked together. And at some point, they started talking about Halo, and I think it was Halo Two for them. And they weren't really talking about how much Halo meant to them. They were talking about. And they weren't really talking about how much they meant to each other, but that's what they were doing is they were sharing those stories of, you know, where they were and what they were doing and how they were, how they were feeling. And, you know, that, that moment, you know, that's like still keeping me going. I mean, that, that might fuel me for the rest of my life. And it's not the only time that's happened, but you get a few of those and, you know, that's all I want. It's just people sharing memories in a in an experience that you know wouldn't have existed without you know you bleeding buckets of blood into the you know whatever code or design or something like that that's what yeah uh, two people having an experience that they wouldn't have had um you know if you hadn't created yeah what you created like that's i don't know that's what matters that's what matters to me We're done.
just going right into like the trailer, huh? Is what I brought you here to see. Beyond light! Stasis is just a tool. It's an ice tornado, dude. That was the sickest thing I've ever seen. Mm. I'm in space! It's freaking Aldrin! Bow. No. <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> I'm gonna shoot you with six anarchies. You're gonna sprint at that Gorgon. Okay? Run, run. Gotta speed a little, dude. Run, run. Here we go. This year we're celebrating our journey with you. Whether you joined us 30 years ago, or if it just started today. This game is in our blood. The Destiny team is full of Destiny fans. Folks who came here because Destiny was their favorite hobby. Folks who log out from work in the evening and log in to play with their clan. The team we have today is committed to <clears throat> relentlessly upgrading this game that we all love. We aren't happy with just another mission. Instead, we want to push the limit of quality you can expect in an action MMO with uniquely Destiny experiences like Expunge and Presage. We are committed to delivering the best mission content that you can play in any game with a friend and having the best feeling action game, period. Dope. And this shows through. Is there still the subscriber only chat? For Destiny 2. Yeah. Since we declared independence two years ago, the Destiny community has grown by over 20 million new players and it continues to go faster than we ever could have predicted. We're grateful to be a part of this amazing growing community that you all have created. You represent Destiny. You help make it better every year, and you are so welcoming and supportive of every new guardian that sets foot in the tower. And only a handful of us are gonna be up here today. Most of them are in their homes at their desks, working hard to bring the next part of Destiny to life. It's a huge honor representing such an incredible team and introducing the next chapter of Destiny 2. So, without further ado, this is the Witch Queen. Oh shit. What the? Wait, what? Wait, what? Bro, what? is serious. I think she's the most dangerous villain we faced yet. Seven years we've been building up to this moment, and she is finally stepping into the spotlight and showing us who she really is. 
what we know about light and darkness is proving to be way more complex than what we previously thought. There are so many lies, truths, and revelations that we're gonna get to in The Witch Queen and the year leading up to it. I mean, we're paying off these narrative threads that go all the way back to Destiny's origins, and we're supporting it with the best content that Destiny has to offer. Definitely, and we've got a lot of awesome content to show today. And let's start with the most mysterious destination yet. Yeah. Sabathun's Throne World. This is an uncharted wonderland of secrets and lies. It's this place that she's created in her own image, this surreal and majestic light-blessed world. She has this castle that she rules from. It overlooks this dark, swampy underbelly with this lone pyramid ship out there. It's the future world she wanted to create, built atop the darkness that she left behind. And throne worlds, they're a deep part of Destiny lore. Powerful entities create these pocket universes, and when we're there, we have to play by their rules. But now, our own light powers are being used against us. I mean, she has this whole army of hive that she's ascended to the light and brought along with her. What? These are the hive guardians, and they are the what? of her new army. Hive Let's guardians? Let's show a little. Let's take the first ever look at the Witch Queen gameplay. I'm sorry, what? Savathun, the Witch Queen. Hive god of cunning and lies. After the death of her brother, Oryx, Savathun went into hiding. Not out of fear, of course. But out of strategy. What the... In her greatest trick yet, stealing our most sacred resource. The one thing we thought she could never touch. The light. No fucking way. Yo. <laughs> Yo. I cannot wait what to reach out and just crush a hive ghost in my hand. Yeah, I mean, we've been defined by the light for so long. This is uncharted territory for us. I mean, we're in strange new places. Like, the throne world, it's haunting but it's gorgeous it's beautiful there's a lot to love there's a few things we saw in the trail that we haven't talked about yet savathun and her lucent brood this is the biggest threat guardians have faced yet so we need to find new weapons to match their power the glaive i love this thing it's brutal and elegant it's this new energy weapon with melee abilities mid-range projectiles and defensive capabilities it's our first ever first person melee weapon and it is such an awesome tool for the battlefield. What the, the feels fuck? So good. Just jump in and unleash these brutal melee combos and transition right to an energy blast. What the fuck? It's really powerful and has a lot of utility. Yeah. So, we've told you about what the glaive can do. <clears throat> now let's talk about how you're going to get your hands on one. These weapons don't come out of chests at the end of missions and you're not going to find one roaming around the throne world. Your first glaive is not going to be found. It's going to be built. Yes, weapon crafting is coming to Destiny 2. What weapon crafting? Now, chasing weapons has been an integral part of the Destiny Pursuit game since the beginning. And over the years, we've added more deterministic paths to get the roles that you want on guns. Think things like Umbral Engrams and the Raid Chest. Weapon crafting unlocks the freedom to choose all that and more. It gives us ultimate control over the guns. Now, this is a combat-focused crafting and progression system. That means the more you use these weapons, the more objectives you complete with them, the more you'll level them up, and the more powerful they grow over time. What? And at launch, here's the awesome thing. You'll be able to craft all Throne World weapons, new raid weapons, and the seasonal weapons. There's just a ton of stuff to do in this system. And the Witch Queen is just the beginning of weapon crafting. We have plans to add more craftable weapons, both legacy and new, throughout the year. We've seen and we've talked about a lot of really cool features, but let's get right into the meat of it. Let's talk about the Witch Queen campaign. 
What? I love campaigns. They've always been a cornerstone of the Destiny experience. They're rich, deep stories interwoven with big combat sequences and memorable characters. They take us to remote worlds in our ever-changing universe. And so we're putting extra care into the campaign for the Witch Queen. We want you to feel those goosebumps when you step onto the throne world for the first time and come face to face with Hive Guardians. And every one of the missions has its own unique fantasy. Like, what does it feel like to storm a castle or just go straight into the depths of hell? If you like games with standalone campaigns like Doom, Titanfall 2, God of War, and Halo, then the Witch Queen is for you. What the fuck, dude? So, in addition to our classic normal mode, Legendary is our tougher, aspirational version of the campaign, where the enemies hit harder and respawning is heavily restricted. So every battle is a gut punch. Every boss is a worthy adversary. It's gonna hurt. <laughs> you might tap out. But if you persist and you get to the end, your time will be well rewarded. Whether you want to play solo or with a fire team, the difficulty will scale based on how many people you bring. Before we go, one last trip down memory lane. I remember camping out the Predator for Destiny 1 because I just had to have the ghost. To me, it was like the symbol of destiny. And if you care about that stuff like me, you're going to want to get your hands on the collector's edition because you're going to get a hive buddy to go up on the shelf with it. Wow, that was so cool. Oh, I'm man. so I'm so excited for this one. And that's not even everything that's in there, too. I know. Those are the hero items, and they're, I think, one of the best ones that we've ever done. Collector's editions have always been like this really perfect jumping point to enter the worlds that we build and actually lifting like in-world objects and putting them in players' hands is just it's just a good feeling. We don't just put random items. Everything in there means something, and it helps push the narrative. And there might be some puzzles to unlock in there as well. So at this point, you can see Sabathun has been one of our greatest threats, operating behind the scenes for years. You may have heard of her brother, the Taken King, but Sabathun is the most dangerous being we've ever faced. She's cunning, elusive, she works in the shadows, so in a way, Sabathun is new to all of us. Exactly, and now it's time to finally see this legend reveal herself and change the Destiny universe forever. What the fuck? But when we talk about the overarching story of Destiny, we don't just mean the plot lines or characters that feature release to release. Narrative is a guiding force in Destiny, and we're calling on its rich history of world They're fucking dropping Destiny 1? And growing it in a bold new direction. So when you join the game today, you'll experience an immediate call to action alongside millions of your fellow guardians. During this past year, we watched the results of your actions play out across Take my wife. seasonal releases. You've redeemed old foes, brought former enemies to the bargaining table, learned that there's always more than one side to every story, and built alliances no one ever thought possible. And on the largest scale, you'll experience a vast, living, interconnected world of stories that's striving to a greater end. We need you, Guardian. You'll experience this alongside a massive community of guardians, <clears throat> release after release, together. This is our universe's cosmic purpose. This 10-year journey we've been on since Destiny 1, it's drawing to its dramatic conclusion. The light and darkness saga will end. But make no mistake, Destiny 2 will not. We're building not so much to an ending, but more to this transformative moment for Destiny 2's future. Last year, we announced the Witch Queen and the following expansion, Lightfall. And now we're excited to announce the release after Lightfall, the final chapter in the Light and Darkness saga, Destiny 2, the final shape. It's going to be one wild, continuous ride. Yes, and that ride starts with Season of the Lost. Not only is it the prologue to the Witch Queen, it's your first opportunity to interact with Sabathun. But rather than spoil it for you, why don't we take a look? If we are to survive the coming storm, the tower and the dreaming city must stand united. We are surrounded, a ring of spears pointing inward from the edges of our system. Oh shit. The Witch Queen is 
is no less dangerous now than she has ever been. We must uncover whatever secrets she knows with the time that we have. Relight the pathways of the Ascendant Plane and guide my people back to me. a malevolent force at work in this plane, Guardian. New exotic quest. Ooh. Ooh. Crossplay. Aid the Queen, rescue the lost. Osiris? Perhaps with them I can save us all. Fucking Osiris with Mara? <gasps> oh, dude. I swear if I call it Sethathun. <laughs> Seasons have gone through massive transformations since Shadowkeep. We're dedicated to creating an evolving, interconnected world that puts your guardian at the center of the action. We're reaching the end of one journey and the beginning of another. The days of Destiny's biggest story moments happening in lore pages is long gone. I mean, Mara's return has been hinted at forever, and now it's happening in a season. What subclass is up there? <gasps> are the updates to the light subclasses every season in year five of Destiny 2. We're adding aspects and fragments similar to stasis. We'll be starting with the void subclass update that goes live alongside the Witch Queen. But the Witch Queen is only the beginning of what's to come, and Season of the Lost is the prologue to that story. It starts off with Marasov's return to the Dreaming City, and with her return, all the awoken technology comes alive. But the Hive God of War, Zebul Wrath, has re-emerged and has Guardians and Mara in her sights. Guardians must forge a path through the Ascendant Plane to save Mars' lost coven of witches before Zebul Wrath can reach them. And to aid you in this task, you'll have the Wayfinder's Compass. The time is at hand. The beacon is shining bright and the ley lines are set in place. It's an ancient awoken artifact that gives the wielder the power to uncover pathways, secrets, and treasures Zebul Wrath. the Ascendant Plane. There's a plethora of new weapons coming, including a suite of legendary stasis guns that will stop your enemies cold. The armor makes you feel like you're a member of Queen Mars Court. And no season is complete without new exotics, and Season of Lost features one once intended for Aldrin. Let's take a moment to talk about Trials. So Trials of Osiris is the in-game aspirational PvP activity and more popular than ever. Two of the biggest asks from our community have been adding anti-cheat and adding matchmaking. In Season of the Lost, we're doing both. We've partnered with BattleEye to soft launch the anti-cheat software when Trials goes live on September 10th. Also, you'll be able to matchmake with groups of players to form fire teams or solo queue by yourself. And we've remixed how rewards are distributed to give all players the opportunity to earn some of the best weapons and coolest armor in the game. That's right. We're shifting away from winning matches as a primary way to earn loot, and instead, winning individual rounds and completing matches will allow you to earn some rewards. But going flawless hasn't changed. So if you want to flex those PvP skills, the flawless chest will still be the only place to earn adept trials weapons and unique cosmetics. All right, so the next chapter in Destiny begins right after this stream with Season of the Lost. Return to the Dreaming City with Marisov and learn the mystic art of wayfinding. I'm so excited Crossplay is going live today. And today is your first opportunity to jump into Destiny with friends on any platform from all over the world playing together. Thirty years of Bungie. What the fuck? <clears throat> oh, Halo, let's go.
my first team. Yo. <sighs> As a company that prides itself on taking care of its employees and, and their significant others and their communities and those who are in need. It's pretty devastating as we look at the racism in America, and uh, our intention is to do better and to leave the world in a better place. We want to be a part of that social change. Fuck racism. Yes. We don't just stop with the games that we make, but we really utilize the successes that we've seen to be able to give back in an even greater capacity that spans beyond uh, just the gaming industry. Thank you, Foundation. Thank you. Pressing button. We're live! <laughs> Destiny servers in line. This is Master has begun. It's awesome to have you here. This game is going to single handedly destroy my social life, and I can't wait. <laughs> Damn. All right, Guardian. Time to kick him where it hurts. <laughs> this is great. Anyone want a hug? <laughs> hugs? No? No hugs. <laughs> How do you follow that? Wow, 30 years. And I, I, I remember when Halo first launched and my friends and I completed the entire campaign in a single epic play session. And as the credits rolled, I knew that, that Bungie had transformed console gaming forever and that, that I would be a lifelong fan. Yeah, it changed how we played games too. I remember getting together with friends for Halo weekend LAN parties. We had so much fun. Fucking insane, And 30 years man. of Bungie games is something special. It's something worth celebrating together. So we're going to have a party in Destiny 2. Wait, what? Starting this December, we are launching the Bungie 30th Anniversary Celebration in Destiny 2. Free for all players, the 30th Anniversary Celebration will offer a new six-player matchmate activity, secrets to unravel, and rewards that commemorate our long and storied history together. And that's just the beginning. In addition to the free event, players can also purchase the Bungie 30th Anniversary Pack that includes a new treasure-themed three-player dungeon set on the Cosmodrome within the fabled Loot Cave. Players will plunder its depths to discover an exciting new Thorm inspired armor set, <gasps> and favorite Destiny 1 weapon, what? like Isaluna and Thousand Yard Stare. It even has the Claymore Sword from Myth. Purchasing the pack unlocks a range of awesome Bungie themed armor ornaments and cosmetics to collect, including ornament sets inspired by the Bungie 30th Anniversary Celebration and Marathon. But the dungeon holds one more secret the crown jewel of its weaponry is a Destiny 1 classic. Galahorn is making its long-awaited debut in No fucking way! We're gonna take its iconic status to the next level. Galley has been carefully updated for the Destiny 2 sandbox. So, this December, no join way. your friends and collect exclusive rewards during what? the Bungie 30th Anniversary Celebration. But the party isn't only happening in Destiny 2. We've partnered with Nerf Limited to create a functional what? start firing Galahorn. We'll have more on that soon. And that's not all. Here's a look at some of the incredible loot we've made over the years and a sneak peek of what's coming up. Insane. Wow, Lorraine, I can't <laughs> believe we're celebrating Bungie's 30th anniversary. 30 years. It's incredible. Yeah. I mean, 
look, think of all the games and products that have come out over these years. Yeah, starting Operation Desert Storm. Fucking Gallon. Marathon, what? Myth, Oni, Halo, <clears throat> and Destiny. Seven years of Destiny. It's an amazing journey. So excited, you know, we have a lot of really cool stuff coming up and a lot of other things in the works, of course, as always. But yeah. I mean, what do we have? We have the fallen captain statue, which is incredible. And then we have the helmet, the Celestial Knight. That thing helmet. is so cool. Yeah. And uh, my favorite, the Arcadia jump ship. Yeah, I get goosebumps just thinking about that. You know, it really gives me that nostalgia from Destiny 1. And so I think it's a great way that we're going to celebrate not only Bungie's 30 year heritage, but the seven year heritage of Destiny. Yeah. And it definitely gives you the feels. Thank you for being on this journey with us, whether it started this year or 30 years ago. We've just started talking about the Witch Queen today. You've got our first peek at weapon crafting, our definitively Destiny campaign, the Glaive, and a year full of updates to all our light-based subclasses. All of this and more is coming alongside Sabathun's long-awaited arrival front and center to the Destiny universe. The Witch Queen marks an acceleration in our story heading towards the conclusion of the Light and Dark Saga, and we're so excited for everyone to join us on this epic adventure in the Witch Queen, Lightfall, the final shape, and beyond. And the Witch Queen's gonna kick off another amazing year of Destiny with four great seasons <laughs> packed with all of the narrative events and rewards that you've come to expect from us. But there's even more coming next year than just our new seasons. The deluxe edition of the Witch Queen will also include two brand new dungeons to be released in 2022. And we're also gonna be remastering another classic Destiny 1 raid and releasing it free for all players. This means going forward, starting this December with our 30th anniversary event, there will be a new piece of raid or dungeon content in the game every three months. What? In 2022, we will also be adding legacy rotations for raids and dungeons, meaning every week there will be new ways to earn rewards in both the latest and greatest content and raids and dungeons from the past. If you love amazing in-game content, we want to prove that no other game offers more quality and more variety than Destiny 2. We hope that you've enjoyed a look into the future of Destiny 2. Witch Queen pre-orders are available wherever you play Destiny. Crossplay is live on all devices, and Season of the Lost kicks off today. See you in-game. What the fuck, yo? Oh. Truth is a funny thing. Who decides what is true? Tell me, little light. What is your truth now? The witch queen is no less dangerous now than she has ever been. Prepare for what is inevitably to come. What the fuck, yo? That was wild. Destiny looks better than ever. I know. Fucking, they're bringing in so much shit. I want Witch Queen to come out already, man. Oh my lord. There's so much to unpack in what's just happened. Like, starting off with like the next season is like. 
fucking crossplay. You got what the Gallon coming back. You got fucking a bunch of other loot coming out. The new new fucking exotics. You got fucking Osiris with the Queen. You got Aldrin interacting with fucking Petrovenge. You got Osiris in the cutscenes. And then you got the Witch Queen with Sabathun. Sabathun sounds like Elsie Bray. She calls us little lights like Elsie Bray. The Exo Stranger. So I don't know why, unless that's just a random thing. Or am I just overthinking it? I don't know. <clears throat> I'm so fucking excited. <laughs> I'm so fucking excited. Holy shit balls. Oh. I don't know, man, because you can turn crossplay off. But, like, I, the thing I like about it is I'll be able to play with you guys and friends on multiple platforms. There we go. It's